the NFL draft is mercifully very, very close, and we're going to take a look at our big board for specifically for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. Now, you may look at our board and be like, ah, you know, that old thing, because that, that's what you do on draft season, right? Because it, it is so amazing because this is the most subjective thing that I can honestly think of. No one is ever right. And uh, you can't even be proven right until like 15 years from now. And no one goes back and, and backtracks, by the way. Like, wh- where, uh, how are we fact checking all, all the mock drafts and big boards from 2005, huh? Were people right on Cadillac Williams? I really know. So, again, this is specifically uh, for what the Vikings want to do schematically, especially on the offensive line, as well as stylistically, uh, positions of need, as well as just h- how personalities would mesh in with the Vikings. So, uh, we'll get into it. So, first off, I, I left the big three quarterbacks off the board because it would have been one two three it would have been uh burrow i actually know it would have been burrow would have been Tua, and then it would have been chase young and herbert probably in there somewhere else but it's one of those things where they're probably not going to be there and Kirk Cousins on the extension, it's that spot. But you, you could say the same thing. Ah, we'll get into it. So first off, uh, Chase Young, Ohio State. So, I mean, if he falls to 22, yeah, but good luck with all that. Isaiah Simmons from Clemson. He is just such a, a fun defender. And if the Vikings really are moving towards a 3-4, you could do so many things with them. Like, uh, if they have a 4-3 base, you can play him at the will. You get In a 3-4 base, you can play him in a will uh you can play him in in the slot as a safety as hell a corner as an edge like it, it's just a really fun utility player things everyone would have a lot of fun with but he's probably not gonna get out of the top 10 so barring a trade up probably not there jeffrey akuda cornerback ohio state cornerback one in this class for me uh, same thing with andrew thomas where yeah especially in this draft i just want the safe dude and i i know that safe can be a misnomer because all, any of these guys could bust but andrew thomas to me is just the most nfl ready left tackle both in pass protection and uh run blocking um so i i would lock him up or if he falls some out of the top 10 go up and get him uh tristan Wirfs uh from iowa the massive right tackle also played a little bit of left tackle at, at iowa as well where Again, Makai Becton gets all the combine hype, but Werfs was a physical freak too, as well as backed it up uh, with some really nice tape uh, in a Power 5 conference. So there you go. Uh, six, Jedrick Wills uh, coming in on Alabama. So for me, it's a really tight grouping. Uh, frankly, I would be happy with either of these, any of these three tackles uh, if they happen to fall into the laps of the Vikings or if the Vikings go up and get them. Uh, Javon Kinlaw coming out of South Carolina. Now, I, I do have him slightly ahead to Derek Brown uh, just because I think Brown is probably close to his peak, even though that's a pretty damn high peak, uh, where Kinlaw, I, I feel like he just has so many raw traits and that explosiveness is just absolutely insane, where I, I think his potential is a little bit higher. Now, his floor is certainly a lot lower, where Derek Brown's floor is pretty damn high. Uh, so that's why uh, we also have Brown at eight. But it, it really is just a, you know, do you want to gamble a little bit more? There you go. Uh, wide receiver wise, uh, the group pretty tightly too. For me, Judy uh, from Alabama is still one. I do like his shimminess. I do like his hands. I do like everything uh, about him uh, and the fact that he has some inside outside. Um, uh, flexibility it, it is great, uh, but also he's just a guy who's dominated on the outside uh, as well. Uh, so I think he would sink in with um, feeling pretty well. Uh, 10, C.J. Henderson out of Florida. Now, uh, it, it's sort of a flavor thing. Um, C.J. Henderson, you could say, is the best uh, press man cornerback in this class. You could say that Okuda is the best all-around cornerback. Uh, but I, I like C.J. Henderson a lot, even though he had a relatively down 2019. The fact that he's still going to be a, a top-10 pick says a lot about his physical traits. Uh, I love these aggro. I love that he gets after it. Uh, 11, C.D. Lamb. So, uh, C.D. Lamb is uh, more physical than Jerry Judy. Uh, he is uh, basically a like a Des Bryant uh, type clone. So, it, it's a matter of um, styles. Like, would you rather have Des Bryant or would you ha- rather have Pete Antonio Brown, you know, without all the drama, which would be Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamb, uh, respectively. Um, well, yeah, other way around. You know what I mean. Uh, 12, Rugs a third. So, <laughs> Speed kills and the whole talk about man, someone could trade up for rugs and it, it's the Chiefs. So it would be uh, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, Michael Hardman, and Henry Ruggs the third. Like, okay, that yeah, no, just gross. Uh, so 13, you got chasing up there. Where when you're betting on traits, um, I, I do like Levon Chase, Clavon Chase on a lot. And uh, if in terms of the Vikings taking edge early, I would prefer it to be Chase on over Gross Matos or at Vanessa. Um, but also, uh, could he be the second edge off the board? 
It's certainly possible. I think he may be gone before the Vikings pick at 22. Uh, 14, I got Josh Jones coming out of Houston. So uh, really pushing up the top of the tackles. And, and you'll notice that um, Josh Jones is ahead of Beckton. Now, that was before the the drug test too, but I, I just feel like people are, are hyping up Beckton way too much. Where Jones uh, says multiple years of starting uh, on the left side, multiple years of, of great production, especially 2019. Uh, after Dana Holgerson came in, uh, a lot of true pass sets as well. And yeah, it does need to work on that anchor a bit. But uh, if he can't get one of the top three tackles, I think Josh Jones uh, is a perfect complement for the Vikings. Why I do uh, so 15 full uh, 15 is the second tier cornerback grouping for me. Um, so beyond Henderson, beyond Akuda, uh, you got Fulton, uh, Johnson, and Gladney. Now it, it's sort of a What's your flavor? You know, what style do you want? Uh, Jalen Johnson, Jeff Gladney are much more, you know, aggro alpha, you know, man-to-man, get after a belt buckle, to belt buckle type cornerbacks. Christian Fulton's a, a really nice uh, cover corner, uh, not as aggressive as the other two, um, but also, you know, uh, sometimes uh, when you gamble, you lose. And uh, as evidenced by uh, Jalen Johnson at, at times over the past couple of years. But I mean, Christian Fulton. I think it is a rock solid all around cornerback. Does remind me a little bit of, of Trey Wayne's, just in terms of um, yeah, how he approaches the game stylistically. Uh, but much better hips uh, will fall in for sure. So uh, if the Vikings miss out, uh, brick out on the top two cornerbacks, which they likely will, uh, having these guys in the second tier ain't that bad at all. 18 first safety off the board. So Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, Delpit and McKinney. I like both, and the Vikings have uh, had interest in both of them, or at least interviewed them. But for me, Winfield, if he can stay healthy. He is uh, an extreme X factor because of he can play single high, he can play in the box, he can play in the slot, he can play some cornerback in the right matchups as well. Uh, and he's just a, a dynamic playmaker in today's sub package, sub package, sub package NFL. That uh, again, if he checks the boxes medically, which you know, in this draft, is there more questions uh, about that because of the Rona? You can't really do medical rechecks. Um, but, yeah, Winfield Jr. is up there for me. Uh, 19, so a little bit controversial. Uh, Jalen Rieger, everyone knows I love him. Just the explosiveness, just the uh, after-catch ability as well as the return ability. It's, I, I really do value him. I really do value his ability to separate, you know, despite not being the biggest dude in the world. Like, I'm, I, it's not so much that I'm spooked by Treadwell. It's just I'm sort of over the you know the big bodied no separation you know 50 50 ball type type cornerbacks uh, excuse me wide receivers just give me the guy who's gonna get open gonna get the ball in space and all of a sudden it turns into a jailbreak right, it turns into a punt return that's Jalen Rieger for me uh, 20 AJ Terrell from Clemson so you could group him in that second tier cornerbacks as well uh, where he's not as He's not as physical man to man as Johnson or Gladney for sure, but just as a solid, decent all around cornerback, um, you know, you wouldn't, uh, you would do a lot worse than Terrell. Also, I mean, don't hold uh, the national title game against them because, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, yeah. All right, next up into the 20s. So, again, a little bit controversial. Ezra Cleveland, uh, tackle from Ohio, uh, Boise State, uh, a little bit higher than a lot of people have. Like, we have him at 21. I think Matt Miller has him at like one. 13 or something like that but again we're talking specifically for the vikings we're talking about specifically uh for that zone blocking scheme so we want nimble light athletic um offensive lineman who can really get across defender's face get into the second level do all that stuff and ezra cleveland uh had a lot of zone blocking at boise state as well as uh pretty decent uh anchoring and pass sets although it does need a lot of work uh adding weight adding some strength but it's pretty relatively easy to do in the nfl look at brian o'neill um yeah because he is the brian o'neill clone plus you know all the reasons that uh, the Vikings um, running back coach and offense and, um, and GM just loved Alexander Madison coming out of that zone scheme in Boise State. Who's paving the way? Er, Ezra Cleveland. There you go. Uh, 22, T. Higgins from Clemson. So uh, we, we have him behind Jalen Rieger, behind um, you know Ruggs and Lamb and um, Judy. But I, I, I know a lot, a lot of people have Denzel Mims up here pretty high. I, I like Mims. I'm not as high on him as a lot of people are. But with Higgins, uh, he checks the boxes decently athletically. Like he, he wasn't a combine superstar uh, like Mims. Well, he didn't even do anything at the combine. He was at his pro day. But just in terms of great hands, in terms of a monster catch radius, in terms of basically what we're talking about, what we're sort of over. Uh, when uh, we're going with Jalen Rieger. I mean, T. Higgins has that. Now, yeah, you could say how much of that was Trevor Lawrence, but also with Justin Jefferson, how much of it was Joe Burrow, how much was it with Joe Brady. So for me, Higgins, if you do want that big outside receiver, I would much rather take the, the safer pick of Higgins than, than Denzel Mims. Um, a lot higher floor with Higgins. Uh, so 23, 
getting getting to the linebacker. So Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma. Again, if the Vikings are uh, really in on moving to a three four, picking up a guy like Kenneth Murray, who really is a, a superstar athlete as well as uh, a really nice three down linebacker really in the mold of an Eric Hendricks I mean you could do a lot worse uh, he's great in coverage uh, come off the edge as well great in blitzing so if the Vikings just want a gang of fast speedy playmaking linebackers Kenneth Murray Eric Hendricks uh, as well as Anthony DeBar could do a lot worse next up is uh, oh 24 so we crack the interior offensive line uh, Caesar Ruiz out of Michigan I did a profile on him earlier today uh, and if the Vikings miss out on the big tackles. Uh, I'm talking about like the big five now. I've reduced it down to Wills, Wirfs, Thomas, um, uh, Ezra Cleveland, as well as Josh Jones. I mean, don't force Austin Jackson if you're not in on him. Don't force Mekhi Beckton if you have questions about him. I mean, Cesar Ruiz come and start left guard day one uh, for the Vikings. And uh, I think that does uh, really mean a lot. Uh, 25, uh, start going with some other edges, AJ Epinesa from Iowa. And again, if the Vikings are moving to uh, a 3-4, I think he would make a lot of sense as a 5-tech. I'm not sure about his edge prowess, uh, straight-up edge prowess in the NFL. Does he have enough speed, quickness on the outside? Mm. Uh, 26, um, going along with uh, Kenneth Murray. So Patrick Queen out of LSU as well. Where Yeah, if the Vikings are moving to a 3-4, having as many speedy, heady linebackers, just amazing. Uh, 27. Gross Matos. Now, I I think that Gross Matos is ceiling is a little bit higher than Epinesa, uh, but also Epinesa's floor I think is a lot higher as well. Uh, but I'm not wild about going edge in the first round. I'm just not. Uh, like I, honestly, if it's a stick and pick spot, sure. But if it's a spot where you know Gross Matos and Epinesa are there at 25, and another team wants to come up. Trade down every single day. Uh, next up is Grant Delpit, uh, safety from LSU, as well as Xavier McKinney. A relatively tight grouping uh, on both. Uh, I do like McKinney on the back end. I think uh, Delpit is a pretty solid all-around safety as well. And like I said, safety could be a low-key position need for the Vikings, depending on what happens with Anthony Harris, as well as uh, Harrison Smith and Younger, uh, and as well as J. Ron Curse and uh, Deho are gone. Uh, 30. So now we finally get uh, the first quarterback on the board, so Jordan Love. And yes, do you question what he did against some lower level competition? Yes. Do you question some of the decision making? Yes. But you just see the absolute brilliant upside where he's got that massive arm. He's got the moxie. Uh, the accuracy is sort of hit or miss. And it, it really is a diet Josh Allen version. But I mean, if you take the best parts of Josh Allen, actually, he is basically Josh Allen. Josh Allen with a little bit more mobility. But, uh, yes, we, we uh, basically took quarterbacks off the board because of the Kirk Cousins extension and because they're, they're going to be out of range. But, I mean, Jordan Love could be sitting on the board 22-25 or even after the Vikings trade back. So it could be a decision that they have to make at that point. And, I mean, yeah, Kirk, you may not like it. But if you have Love sitting uh, behind Kirk Cousins for a year or two, um, you never know what might happen there. All right, so 31 into the interior defensive line. So Justin Matabuke from Texas A&M, uh, they've done a lot of work on him. I, I do like him. He's not as insane penetrator as, say, uh, a Kinlaw and as well as, uh, you know, not as uh, strong on the interior as, say, a Derek Brown. But I think he is a uh, really solid all-around three-tech, would bring a little bit of something to the Vikings D-line. 32-33. Uh, so Denzel Mims and Tyler Johnson. Now, both of these are controversial placings um a lot of people think mims is too low a lot of people think tyler johnson is way too high but for me tyler johnson route running and just him coming into an nfl system day one uh, i think he would be a, a huge asset right away because um because of the route running because he runs a full route tree just because he's a tough kid who was always going to get after contested catch balls were denzel mims combine warrior yes he played 2018 with a broken hand i just there's just a lot of question marks, right? So I think Tyler Johnson has, has an extremely high floor. Denzel Mims has an extremely high ceiling, but also an extremely low floor uh, as well. So that's why they're relatively close uh, grouped up there. Uh, 34, also in the quarterback. So Jalen Hurts. And, yeah, you're talking about a guy who at Alabama probably wasn't going to project to be an NFL quarterback. But coming into Oklahoma, uh, working Lincoln Riley, you, he always had the arm strength. He always had the mobility. He always had the character and the leadership attributes. But the accuracy was starting to come along. Now, Oklahoma's offense, quasi gimmicky, quasi whatever. Yeah, sure, you could say that too. I mean, look at Baker Mayfield. You look at um, um, Kyler Murray. Uh, jury's still out on both of them, those guys. But, I mean, if the Vikings just have Jalen Hurts in at 58, they already checked the box on a couple of positions in need early on. I mean, certainly something that they'll have to think about. 35. So, uh, a guy that we're, we're a lot higher on uh, against 
scheme specific zone uh, scheme. Jonah Jackson, uh, the guard from Ohio State, a uh, guy that we talked about quite a bit. Uh, so, so 36, Trevon Diggs, I, you know, because at a certain point you can't ignore the talent. I mean, dude is a, a pretty uh, solid all-around cornerback, but would he come to the team that jettisoned his brother or his brother forced to be jettisoned from? There's a lot that would have to be hashed out and talked about. Like, if Diggs' problem was with specifically Kirk Cousins, fine. Diggs, come on in, work with Zimmer. But if Diggs' problem was with management and Zimmer, I don't think this could ever work out. I just don't. Uh, 37, Justin Jefferson. Again, relatively low uh, compared to other big boards, but again, stylistically, um, he, he's going to be an only NFL slot receiver where he struggles to get off a of press on the outside, uh, as well as, like we said, how much of it was him? Uh, a lot of it was him, but also how much do you attribute to Joe Burrow uh, as well as Joe Brady? Uh, but just the crossover with Thielen working on the slot more and more as he gets older, yeah, for me, 38 Beckton. So, uh, at a certain point, you just have to stop the draft day slide, right? Because Becton, it's you do worry about his tape. You would have liked to see him dominate more or at least show flashes of it. Uh, but that combine is pretty legit. Would have liked to see more on the bench. But I think that he is the most highly variant offensive lineman, uh, maybe even the most highly variant uh, prospect in this entire draft. So that's why I have him pretty low. Uh, 39, Brandon Ayuk, where uh, I do have Rieger over Ayuk, where uh, a lot of uh, a lot of their skills do overlap, but Ayuk's uh, prowess in the return game, as well as his ability after the catch, is pretty damn impressive. Uh, 40, Jordan Elliott. So, for me, Elliott, as well as Matabuke, as well as Neville Gallimore, are relatively close together. Uh, we also have Neville Gallimore at 41. And if the Vikings want to go that route, um, say in the second round, I think that's a lot of value there. Uh, 42. So, an edge that I actually like more than uh, Epinesa and Gross Matos just because of where they potentially could go. So Kurt Weaver out of Boise State, where if he's there in the second round, uh, I think that's a slam dunk um, pick, even though Rick Spillman has never drafted a first or second round edge rusher. But also, yeah, he never drafted a first uh, round interior offensive lineman until last year. So uh, I think it could just be a, a spot of knee. So say the Vikings uh, suture up a couple of positions uh, early on in the first round, second round Curtis Weaver's just that are chilling, pick him up. Uh, Bryce Hall, cornerback from Virginia. A uh, guy that we really like a lot more than most. Uh, again, go back to 2018. Probably can make a case he was the best cornerback in all college football. Would If he would have come out last year, uh, I think he would have been a first-round pick. But um, ha, ha, was injured, had a meh year, but I think he'll bounce back pretty nicely. I'm not a you know, pure man-to-man scheme guy. I think he'll, he'd be better off um, in his zone, uh, you know, primarily zone defense. But uh, the Zimmer defense has moved from a lot more uh, press man the last couple of years to a little bit more zone concepts. So, Maybe fits in. Uh, 44, Isaiah Wilson. So we have him relatively low uh, because he's a right tackle, right tackle, right tackle, where if you brought him in, would you have to move Brian O'Neill to left tackle? You want to have all those moving parts, uh, but I think he's a pretty solid player. Could sneak into the first round. Uh, 45, Austin Jackson. So I, I fully get the upside of Austin Jackson, uh, where he's kid's only 20 years old, uh, has all, all the physical attributes that you would want. It just... <sighs> You just do worry about how he played in some big time games, you know, against Notre Dame, against Aquara, against uh, Epinesa, against Iowa. He just didn't step up and step out the way that you would like against top flight competition. So that that does worry me. That's why he uh, we're relatively lower on him than others. That's why we have guys like Ezra Cleveland and Josh Jones uh, even ahead of him because it, they do seem a little bit more higher floor uh, than Austin Jackson. 46, uh, Zach Bond, the edge rusher uh, out of Wisconsin. Uh, I think he could be a solid asset either in a 3-4 as an edge rusher or in a 4-3. He could play that weak side linebacker spot. Russ Blacklock, uh, again, uh, Gallimore, Elliott Blacklock, uh, all, all grouped relatively close together for me. Uh, just uh, sort of a question of uh, what sort of flavor that you want. 48, Nathani Moody. Nathani Moody, uh, the super high-end, amazing, if you can say healthy, uh, offensive guard from Fresno State. He is just a, a mauler. Like, he is the uh, – like, him and Robert Hunt are just absolute men uh, among young young children out there. But can Nathani Moody stay healthy? That's why I want to know. 49, LaVisca Chenault, uh, the do-it-all Percy Harvin-esque uh, player of the strap. Again, can he stay healthy? 50, Michael Pittman Jr., 6'4", 230, if he's an ounce, just a Greek god out there on the outside. Uh, would not mind him at all. 
51, the burner. K.J. Hamler take the top off the defense. I'm back home. Uh, again, can, health issues. Can he stay healthy? Uh, also, some questions about the hands, but that speed you can't deny. Uh, 52, first running back off the board. So, J.K. Dominance, uh, J.K.2K, uh, coming out of the Ohio State University. Now, running back, not a overall pressing position of need, but also if you're getting into – well, Dobbins probably won't be in that in the third round. But if you are looking towards into the third round at 89, at 105, and you know the board breaks right and you want to just add uh, some more backs to the stable, if you're going to be a run-first team, may as well have as many good running backs as you possibly can. So, yeah. Are, are you in a Mike Boone? Yes. Are you in a Alexander Madison? Absolutely. Are, are, do you want to put a little bit of leverage on Delvin? Sure. So Dobbins could be the guy there. Also, Dobbins... Uh, ability in, in the inside out zone scheme uh, that Ohio State's really heavy on. It was just uh, amazing. He's really a patient runner, re- really uh, solid um, in, in that regard. 53. Julian Nakwara from Notre Dame, where if you're betting on physical traits, certainly up there with Curtis Weaver, uh, wouldn't mind him in the second round at all. Uh, 54, Lucas Niang, where if he wasn't, if he didn't have injury uh, issues, where I actually think that he'll be able to bounce back from them, he probably would be in what like the big six, big seven conversation. Um, so the fact that if the Vikings get him in the second round, I, I think that's uh, you know, a pretty nice pickup for them. Uh, but uh, a little bit of a tight grouping here. So Prince Tagawanogo from Auburn. Does need a lot of work. It is a big-time project. Would, would uh, be nice if he sat here. 56, Matt Pert uh, from UConn. Could play either tackle spot, even could kick him inside the guard. Uh, like him a lot. Uh, 57, so DeAndre Swift as well. Not as a complete back as Dobbins. Uh, really do like his receiving game, though. Uh, 58, Marlon Davidson. Um, he played some edge at Auburn. Uh, projects to kick inside. Uh, could be a five tech in, in the three four. Uh, Fifty nine Zach Moss from Utah. Where if you're looking for you know, the closest fast simile to Dalvin Cook in this draft, it would be Zach Moss. Where you do have this big bodied solid receiver guy, a little bit of wiggle, uh, solid explosiveness. That Zach Moss. Uh, Fifty. Excuse me, 60, uh, Davin Hamilton uh, from the Ohio State University. First no tackle to make it onto the board here. Uh, but also has, you know, could kick him into three tech uh, on some early, you know, running downs. It would make a lot of sense there. Uh, and then lastly, uh, into the 60s. So Cameron Dancer uh, on Mississippi State where – uh, he needs to add a lot of weight. Uh, he did answer some of the speed issues uh, that popped up at the combine. I, I, I didn't think that his tape showed that he ran as slow as a four six, uh, but also, I mean, just absolutely stick then. Uh, but again, adding strength to the NFL. There you go. 62, Ben Barsh. Uh, I do like his upside as a project from St. John's. Uh, Jabari from Florida. There you go. Uh, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, uh, just a, another great receiving back. Uh, you're seeing a lot more. Uh, three down backs, a lot less of the two down tyrants uh, just because of the way that football is shifting and starting to trickle up to the NFL. Uh, Jeremy Chin, just the absolute physical freak safety from Southern Illinois. Big time project. I wouldn't want him starting day one, but I'm actually down the line. Uh, speaking of physical freaks, 6'6", six, six, Chase Claypool and Notre Dame. 6'7", uh, Robert Hunt, just a man child from Louisiana. Now he projects to be more inside, but just ridiculous. Uh, and the last two, two of my favorites. So Tyler B edition, uh, the do it all versus all into your offensive line from Wisconsin uh, as well, even though he went to a terrible school as well as Amik Robertson, Antoine Winfield jr. No. Yeah. Actually the real Antoine Winfield jr. Cause he plays more like senior than junior uh, Louisiana tech. Uh, I would just love him. If, if the Vikings double back on cornerback, like say they got uh, Gladney or Johnson, the first round came back in the third and got Amik Robertson. I, I would absolutely love that. Uh, and that that is it. Uh, there we go. That is our uh, big board uh, for this year uh, for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings specifically. Uh, what are your thoughts? Roast us. Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. If you want to support the work, pull us on the Venmo. Please give us a follow on social media as well. But until next time, Skull, production value.